Right here, this is just another video just to confirm uh, basically what I was discussing in the previous video. The, I, I realized that that method was quite convoluted and was basically a barrier to me summarizing more papers. So the ultimate goal is to summarize papers quickly and accurately so that you can process the information. Um, so as you can see, hopefully here on the screen, is uh, basically what I my approach. So I've just finished summarizing uh, a paper, which I'll find right here. So it's this paper here uh, that was talking about the measurement of cortisol and testosterone here in uh, obese and non-obese human subjects. So once again, not directly relevant, but it definitely has some level of relevance to what I'm talking about because they're measuring the two hormones that I'm measuring and they're also doing it in uh, hair, whereas I'm doing it in wool. Um, paper was not too long, um, but the main takeaways, that th this is really what I wanted to show. So whilst the document was on my other monitor, the paper, I looked at these two documents. So this document here on the left is all of, in the introduction at least, and throughout the discussion, uh, these these little sources here. So, saliva samples uh, do more close. Saliva samples do more closely reflect free hormone levels. So I wrote this Walker paper down. So this isn't in my notes for this specific paper, because this is something. This is a source that these authors have used and cited. So it's not to be attributed to this paper. I found it in this paper, but it doesn't mean it's going to be cited by these authors. It's going to be cited by this author. Before I can do that and before I can be confident to use this citation, I need to read that paper to make sure that's where it came from. So as you can see here, I've written a little uh, note just summarizing the idea. So saliva samples more closely reflect free hormone levels. Basically what the paper said. Um, I've written the name wrong, but I can fix that. And then now that I've read this, I have a good idea, uh, this paper specifically, that I'm going to go back and read next. So like, because it's taught me something foundational. Um, so yeah, I've got all these papers, one, two, three, four, five, six, six papers to go back and read from reading that one paper. I provided the title here, <laughs> pardon me, the, um, in-text citation, which is how I'm referring to this paper in the next document, and then the um, APA 7th edition citation uh, without formatting. But this document here on the right, this is the main document. So this is where every note from that paper went that I just read this paper right here. So every original idea and the outcomes and methodology and shortcomings of the trial and other notes from this specific paper, all stored in one place, and this is where they are. Once again, title, in-text citation, uh, uh, reference. And here I had the background, so I didn't call it introduction because this I wanted this part here to summarize literature that, uh, or idea, new ideas that, original ideas that are stated um, by the authors of this paper and some of them are in the introduction and some of them aren't so i didn't call it the introduction i just called it background so this idea here um, i've actually written it sort of in a little paragraph in a few sentences um, so this paper is the paper we're looking at chair netow 2014 states that accurate repeat sampling of saliva and blood tissues may be difficult to specify resampling times so what they were talking about here is that um, you can use saliva, but there's so many quirks with it. For instance, what, what did the person just eat? Um, sampling times. Uh, just because you can collect the sample on this day, are you going to be able to collect it on the next day to get an accurate comparison? Um, so that fact there, and I've also written underneath, additionally, uh, they note these methods cannot assess the bioactivity of hormones over a longer time horizon. Um, so that's talking about looking back in the past. Um, I might actually just write that there. Um, 
historical uh, hormone record. So, I mean, one of the traits with wool is, or with uh, hair in general, is if it's really long, you can break it down and look at the hormone deposits over time. Um, you can't necessarily do that with saliva because it's it's changing quite frequently. So I've given this a little heading here, limitations of saliva, uh, comma, blood hormone assessment. So this is this and this one here, uh, the advantages of using ho uh, hair to measure, uh, measure hormones. These two paragraphs here will be copied and pasted into a document roughly called uh, hormone assessment or something to that extent so that every idea every little paragraph like this gets divided into one document either it's about hormone assessment it's going to be about wool quality it's going to be about um, maybe there'll be a climate one and then over time once those documents get really really large um, then I'll be able to break them down into their a further uh, hierarchy of ideas and then progress with writing my literature review. Anyway, then I talked about the method. So this is the method they used, probably the same method I'll be using. These here are their findings. I could honestly get rid of these little citations here, but I probably won't. Um, this just proves that everything in, so I only have three dot points. So they found that hair cortisol and body weight were positive correlated. So if you had a high body weight, they're looking at obese individuals, high body weight, high hair cortisol, low body weight, lower hair cortisol. So that's positive correlation. Uh, additionally, they found that testosterone levels were negatively correlated with age and BMI. So if you had a higher BMI, um, you had a lower test level. And if you had a, a low BMI, you had a higher test level. And if you were younger, you had a higher test level. And if you were older, you had a um, lower test level. And they also said here, which is a, an issue with this particular study, is and they do try to explain it, uh, is that there's no correlation between hair cortisol and urine cortisol. So you would theoretically, it, it, one could argue, at least without looking at the literature, just by logic, that if you're testing cortisol and you can use multiple different body tissues and they give different results, that might be an indication that one of these methods isn't an indicator or reliable indicator at least. But they do explain it um, well, they do provide a, a, a suggestion why this may be. But once again, they weren't looking at the urine cortisol. And yeah, there are some flaws with this study um, as listed there. That's mo mostly for my reference. Uh, if I need to go back and something smells a bit fishy later on. This way, I've just extracted roughly, probably closer to uh, 200 words. Pardon me, 192 words worth of valuable information from this one paper. It's quite short. It's not it's just under 200 words, but once again, it's not directly related. It's this is a, a clinical trial. So save these documents and move on to the next paper.